Good morning and welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you with words of Jesus that he speaks in John chapter 15. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sit as we sing the hymn, God himself is present. Thank mm -hmm. you. friends in Christ. Let us confess our sins to God our Father and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. And you may be seated as we do. We confess that we are born in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We deserve your eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. And ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart. Do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? Amen. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? Amen. 
Do you intend with the help of the Holy Spirit to live as in God's presence and to strive daily to lead a holy life, even as Christ has made you holy? I do. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you. On behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive you all your sins. I'm sorry, I forgive the sins of all of you who repent and believe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand as we sing the Lord have mercy. Jesus, our loving friend and saviour, you have promised to give us your spirit to be with us forever. Stay within our hearts so that we love one another as you have loved us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the first reading for today. The first reading for today, the sixth Sunday of Easter, is written in chapter 10 of Acts, beginning at verse 44. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they had heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. We stand as we speak Psalm 98 responsibly. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. 
All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The second reading for today is written in chapter 5 of 1 John, beginning at verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God, when we love and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has any power over him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Our Holy Gospel reading for today is written in the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, beginning at verse 9. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We sit as we sing the hymn, Faith is a Living Power from Him.
Grace, peace and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we hear your word for us today, help us to treasure its promises and grow us in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think the last 15 or 20 years the way that people relate has changed dramatically with the explosion of social media. Facebook was probably one of the key things in 2004 when it first launched, and I resisted for many years and then finally succumbed when my children moved out of home as a way of keeping in touch with them. When I was first on Facebook, I discovered that I received friend requests from people that I really didn't know and I was quite flattered that they would want to know me. And then I discovered that often it came from people who had already a thousand friends or two thousand friends or more. You know, the Oxford University did a study which proved that about 150 people is really about the maximum number of relationships that anyone can maintain in a meaningful kind of way. So what makes a good friend? You know, God's word describes a number of wonderful friendships. David and Jonathan, Naomi and Ruth. What about you? I mean, maybe you've got lots of Facebook friends, acquaintances and so on, but how many real friends do you have that stick with you through thick and thin? You know, with a, a mobile world in which we live, a shifting population. It's very rare these days for someone to remain in the, the village or the, the suburb where they grew up. It still happens, but it's becoming more and more rare. And so we often have situational friendships in our life, people that we come into contact for a while with through our work or our neighbourhood or our um, studies or whatever it is, our, our sporting clubs. But then people move on and the friendships disappear. But some friendships last the distance. Some friendships continue on and you can get together with someone who maybe you haven't seen for years and pick up right where you left off. And maybe you've got a friend like that, someone you can sit and drink a coffee or a glass of wine with and not even have to say a word, just enjoy their company. Maybe you've got a good friend who knows you well enough to speak the truth to you when maybe others wouldn't. If you are blessed with such friends, then praise God for that. Absolutely. But not everyone is blessed with friends like that. There was a football coach in the middle of a, a terrible losing season. His team was getting absolutely hammered every single week. And so the supporters, the media, the club hierarchy, everyone was on his back and he felt like he didn't have a friend in the entire world. And things began to get so bad that it even began to impact his home life. And he said, my dog was my only friend. I told my wife that a man needs at least two friends, and so she went out and bought me a second dog. <laughs> you know, true friends, people who will stick with you in good and bad, are quite rare. But in our text today, we have an amazing declaration from our Lord Jesus, when he declares to his disciples, and that's us by extension, you are my friends. Just to clarify, Jesus uses this word in quite a specific sense though. It's different from how we might use that word. You know, for us, friendship is a, a bit of a reciprocal arrangement. Each party gives something to the relationship and fills a need in the other. But as the son of God, Jesus is not filling some emotional need that he has for friendship. Some need that he needs us to meet. However, we need his friendship, and he meets our greatest need of all. In the Greco-Roman world of the time of Jesus, the word friend was also a title of great honour. And so to call someone friend was to bestow a title upon them, you know, friend of Caesar, for instance. And so in the whole of the Old Testament, only Abraham and Moses were ever referred to as friends of God. But Jesus, God in the flesh, says to us in this text today, you are my friends. And so this is a position of great privilege and honour. 
It's staggering to think that we have been declared friends with almighty, all-powerful, awesome God. There was a priest in Ireland who was walking through his rural parish and he saw and he heard an elderly farmer kneeling by the side of the road praying and he was fascinated to see such an uninhibited display of faith. So when there was a pause in the prayer, he said to this man, you must be very close to God. And the farmer looked up from his prayers, thought for a moment, and with a smile said, yes, he's very fond of me. And it might sound presumptuous for someone to say that, to call God our friend, but it's actually not us who decides that. You see, God <laughs> declares it to us. And God is more than fond of us. He embraces us into his inner circle, into his family, in fact. Not because we've earned the right or done anything deserving of that, but simply because he is gracious and he is kind and loving. You know, just consider for a moment the circumstances under which Jesus says these words. It's the night before he will suffer and die. Monday, Thursday. And he says these very words knowing that just moments later, Judas will betray him. Peter will deny ever having known him. And each one of his disciples will abandon him in his great time of need. What great friends Jesus had. And yet, knowing all that, he still calls them friends. He makes this declaration because friendship with God is not based on what we do. It's based on God's gracious action towards us. Listen to Jesus in this text. He says, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And so Jesus shows to us that his offer of friendship, it's real, it's the real deal, it's not just words, because he backs it up with action. He lays down his life for us in the, the greatest act of love possible. In fact, Jesus also says in this text, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. And again, this is a staggering thought to consider. When you consider the way that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is the perfect model of love, the love is the depth of their love, total selfless love. And with that same love that the Father has for the Son, God has loved us in the same way. That's one of the staggering conclusions of the gospel. You know, there are some television shows where when you're in trouble, you can phone a friend and get some help. Well, we not only have a friend who is willing to help us, but the most powerful friend of all. Because of Jesus, we now actually have friends in high places. The farm where I grew up in rural South Australia was about five kilometres off the main road. And that five kilometres that led to our house and our neighbours' houses, it was basically a dirt track. In summer, it was fine. You know, we had to contend a bit with the dust, but wintertime was a bit of a problem for us and the other families. My sisters and I, we rode our bikes to school and so on the, the wet and muddy roads, it would flick up the mud on the back of our legs and the school bags and so on. The family car would slither and slide dangerously at different points on the road. The, the creeks would get washed out all the time. It needed gravel, it needed a road base there to keep it solid for us to travel on. But we could never get the local council to do anything. My dad would protest and complain and nothing would ever happen. Might be five years later, somebody would turn up and say, what's the issue here? Well, in our little town of Greenock, population 300, lived Senator Sir Condolauke. And my dad had grown up with him in that same little country town. They had been lifelong friends. And Condolauke was president of the Senate in Canberra for a uh, number of years in the 70s and 80s. And then he was the Lieutenant Governor of South Australia for a decade after that. My dad was reluctant to say anything to his friend. He didn't want to misuse the friendship that he had. But over the years, on several occasions, he let slip the great frustration he was having with the local council. And within 24 hours of him saying that, there was a council truck there fixing the roads for the families on that street or that road. You see, friends in high places can make all the difference. 
And we have a friend in the highest place of all. We have one who sits at the right hand of God the Father, and he has declared us to be his friends. And we need a friend badly. We badly need a friend because God's holy, perfect law brings accusations against us. It convicts us, it condemns us because of our sinfulness. We are under judgment. We cannot escape from it because of our continual disobedience and guilt. But our friend in the highest place of all, he has dealt with those charges, not by sending some people to go and take care of it for us, but he himself came in the flesh to offer his own body, bearing the full brunt of everything that should have fallen on us, dying on a cross so we could be forgiven and set free. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus goes on to say, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You know, the usual process of friendship, you meet someone somewhere, you have a bit of light chat, and eventually you discover some interests amongst each other, and, and backwards and forwards, the, the friendship grows over time and builds. But not Jesus. He simply loved us full stop. He declares us friends, regardless of what we've done or how long we've known him. That's his gift to us. And he lovingly offers all the benefits of that friendship. And we see that continually demonstrated throughout the New Testament. Always loving the unloved, the unlovely. Loving the unlovable. Connecting with those that everyone else would rather push to the side. The outcast, the sick, the publicly despised, the prostitutes, the demon-possessed. Always demonstrating God's incredible gift of loving friendship for all people. And it's interesting, the opponents of Jesus, what they said of him disparagingly. They said, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And unknowingly, what a wonderful title they actually gave to him. Friend of sinners. Because that's great news for me. And I hope it is for you too. Yes, Jesus has chosen us, even when we were God's enemies, running away, loathing him. He declares us to be friends. It was the end of the American Civil War and President Lincoln was asked why he was pardoning all of those southern rebels who had fought so bitterly against him during the war. And they said, Mr. President, don't you want to destroy your enemies? And this is what Lincoln said. He said, is that not what I do? when I make them my friends. You see, Jesus has turned us from enemies into friends by forgiving us. Jesus is the faithful friend, even when we are not. He's seen our worst, he knows all of our weaknesses, yet he never turns away. In thick and thin, he is our constant companion. He is the friend of sinners who laid down his life for us. And now because of that, because we are friends of Christ, friends of God, there are some wonderful responsibilities that flow out of that relationship. Jesus says in our text, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. So here Jesus is urging us to hold on to, to treasure his word, his commands, the things he's promised. And as we do, as we remain in that love, then that will bear fruit in our lives, as we heard last week in the, the first part of this chapter. We actually show that our friendship with Christ is real by bearing fruit in his name, forgiving others again and again, going the extra mile, speaking the truth in love. You know, friendship with Christ is shown not by how much we say that we love him, but it's shown by our loving response to what he's done. And so we make ourselves recognisable as his friends when we display that attitude of his love to others. You know, humanly, that's impossible to love 
in the way that Jesus has loved us. You can't do that. I can't do that. Unless Christ lives within us. And then it is very possible. You see, the love and friendship of Jesus that we receive enables us to love others in that same way. That's what gives us the power to love the unlovely, to love the irritating and annoying ones. We're not called to like everyone. We're not called to like what they do, but to love them with the sacrificial friendship which Christ has shown to us. And as we do, Jesus makes this wonderful promise to us. As we remain in his love, then our joy will be complete. We will have and know his joy. Yes, the greatest and truest friend that you can ever have, ever will have, is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Saviour, our God, who laid down his life for you. I pray that you would willingly and gladly receive his friend request. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As you take your seats, your offering for the work of the Lord will be received as we sing together the song in Christ alone. Oh. 
we stand for the offertory song. praise you for calling us friends because of your son Jesus Christ and for joining us to you through him. Thank you for his loving sacrifice and grant that we may follow in his footsteps as his disciples, befriending those in need, serving others and bringing good news to all. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have been elected to positions of leadership and authority in our state and nation. Bless Prime Minister Scott Morrison and all sitting members, Premier Anna Palaszczuk and all those holding state parliamentary seats, as well as local council members. Grant that they would use their power wisely to serve the people under their care. Give them wisdom and foresight to make helpful and life-sustaining decisions for our city, state, and country. Lord, in your mercy. We praise and thank you, Lord, for the friends that we do have and their loyalty and love. Help us as a congregation to befriend those who are lonely and care for those who struggle. Be with those who find it hard to initiate or keep friendships. Be with those who feel isolated and friendless. Help them to find a place of acceptance in your family. Help them to know your loving care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of India, where the coronavirus is running out of control and causing much heartache, sickness and death. Have mercy on those who are suffering or grieving. Grant protection to all doctors, nurses and medical staff as well as those who fill essential community services in other areas. Give wisdom to the leaders of that country as they make decisions in an attempt to curtail the spread. Enable the supply of vaccine to increase and be available especially to those who are most at risk. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Remember those from our congregation who are facing health concerns or living with pain, stress or mental health issues. Grant healing, strength and patience to Val Reynolds as she recuperates in hospital after surgery. Help the doctors discover what is ailing Delma Kristen as she undergoes numerous tests again. Bring healing and continued faith to Dalmain Pham, Neville Dunn, Nola Hall, Daryl McNeil, Vince and Joan Richters, and the family of Colleen Hill, as well as all those who struggle with any need of body or soul. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Well, we pray today for Karen Long's father, Noel Dam, as he battles declining health. Lord, as his family and friends support him, grant him healing and strength to continue the fight, grant him continued faith, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant your blessing on all mothers, Lord, and give them joy in caring for their families. We thank you for those who have loved, nurtured, and looked after our needs over the years. Bless the memory of those mothers who are no longer with us. Give mothers strength and patience to face the daily battles and challenges of parenting. Give them energy when tired, calmness when stressed, perseverance when discouraged, and love when they feel dry. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear our prayer. Provide all mothers with support and reassure them of the importance of their role. Use their selfless love to point their children to your loving care for us. Remember also those women whose desire to be a mother but have not been able to do so, as well as those who have lost children or are separated from them. Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of mothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayer and help us to remain in your love, bearing much fruit in our lives. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favour and give to you his peace. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for the doxology. Mm -hmm.